Yeah, in case you missed it, Russell Westbrook yeah. is being traded <laughs> to the Wizards. The Rockets receive John Wall wow. in a first round pick. Ding! What do you think of this news? <laughs> I, I love it in the sense that uh, the NBA just keeps getting more and more interesting, right? They, they just keep delivering. It's like, no, this this can't really happen, can it? Oh, yeah, sure. Let's sure, why not? Okay, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> It'll be interesting. But Russell Westbrook, I mean, just think about what has happened since, you know, it wasn't that long ago that he was right there with KD and they're yep. threatening to take down the Warriors, right? Or, or almost three one. Really. They, they yep. had that lead. Yeah, and, and now since then, it's just been such a precipitous drop. Of everything's gone differently, and now he's bouncing from the Rockets and James Harden to bouncing over to the to the Wizards, and they're hoping what, that, that he can, you know, change things for, for Bradley Beal to, to that level. I mean, it, it's, it's, it's obviously a little bit of grasping for both franchises, but it's fun. <laughs> we like it. I, I don't know what to make of it. I mean, I think the winner is the team that got the draft pick. In this case, it's Houston. Uh, and I understand why they get it. John Wall did not play at all this past season. Uh, didn't really play much the two years before that either. I think he only averaged about 35 games a season. So he's been down and out for a few years now. They both have the same amount of money left on their contracts. It's a very parallel trade. And why not? You have to do something in Houston. That team just, we, we, I still don't know what, what happened to that franchise. They were interesting. They were fun. They got a game off the Lakers in the second round. And then not competitive after that. Had to mix it up a little bit. As exciting as all of this is, let me remind all of us that there's still one thing that is above and beyond our control, and that's the pandemic. And here's the latest from the NBA. The NBA and Players Association released initial COVID-19 testing results in a joint statement saying NBA players returned to a league-wide testing program over the past week with testing beginning between November 24th through the 30th, depending on the day that a player returned to the team's market. Of the 546 players tested for COVID-19 during this initial return to market testing phase, 48 have returned positive tests. Anyone who has returned a confirmed positive test during this initial phase of testing in their team's market is isolated until they are cleared for leaving isolation under the rules established by the NBA and the Players Association in accordance with CDC guidelines. Still to come, opening night in the NBA, it's set. Lakers against Clippers ahead. We'll play rank them for the top storylines heading into the hallway series. Plus, there is another Gasol in LA. Coming up, you'll hear my one-on-one -on -one with Powell's younger brother on why he chose of the day. LeBron James is going to be here a while. According to multiple media reports, LeBron and the Lakers have agreed to a two-year contract extension that will keep LeBron with the purple and gold through the 2022-23 season. LeBron is coming off a year where, at age 35, he led the league in assists at over 10 a game. Now, LeBron was already under contract for $39 million this year. The reported terms of the extension, starting in the 2021-22 season, he will be making over $41 million. And that will bump up to over $44.5 million in the 2022-23 season. I love those numbers. Uh, Clutch Sports tweeting out the news saying, congrats, King James, signing your extension with the Lakers. Hashtag Clutch. Clutch. I don't know about you guys, but I, I feel like this news caught me <laughs> by surprise. Kevin Ding, did yeah. it you as well? Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, you don't get this very often in the NBA world where uh, you get blindsided by a star, the ultimate star, <laughs> signing a deal of any sort. So uh, kudos to Clutch and LeBron's crew uh, in this sense. But the more you think about it, the more sense it makes if LeBron is this comfortable, this happy with the Lakers family, then it makes sense. He can make a little bit more money by uh, extending it now. Uh, based on collective bargaining agreement arrangements. But the gist of it is that he's he's desperate, not desperate, but eager to lock himself in with this new Lakers family. And more than anything else, it's a testament to what a great year they had together. As much crazy stuff has happened, right? It brought LeBron closer to the Lakers family. And here's the result is, is moving forward. Yeah, the extension I was expecting from a clutch client was Anthony Davis any day now. Mm -hmm. They've been talking about that for a while now. And yeah, definitely very uh, excited by this, but also definitely surprised by it. You know, and no one more deserving than LeBron James. He, he turned back the clock at least 10 years with his play in the playoffs. He was outstanding in the bubble, uh, well deserving of that finals MVP. And uh, what a pickup for the Lakers. Uh, and the other thing is, 
Next season, not the one that's about to start, but next season, uh, it, it was a player option. So maybe in like January or February, a few months from now, maybe some questions would have cropped up from reporters. You know, what are you going to do about your opt-in? And now he gets to avoid all that, all those questions, and uh, just concentrate on basketball for three solid years with the Los Angeles Lakers. Which is so nice because I think we've caught him, though he's about to turn 36, at still a very nice great. time of his career. Exactly. Absolutely. Uh, you both kind of touched on it, Kevin, as well. Um, just the confidence this shows that he has in the franchise and that they have in him. Uh, moving forward, the trickle-down effect, what does this mean? And, and we were kind of talking before we came on air. He does have a son, and the years may yeah. line up. You know where you're going. <laughs> He's got two yeah. sons, but there's one in particular. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it, it does line up. The math does work out that uh, when LeBron is done with this extension, Bronny could be entering the NBA and LeBron could just go join him and play there uh, for one more year or the way that LeBron looks, he could be playing for three, five, <laughs> ten more years the way LeBron looks right now. But uh, that's, yeah, far out there. And LeBron, as you know, Ali and Brez, he's mentioned that as as a goal of his, uh, a far reaching goal but that's a, that's a goal of his to have line up but for now the gist of it is that uh and it's sort of refreshing to be honest to have a star player not be trying to you know hold a hammer over an organization and say look i can leave at any time i can leave after any year mm -hmm. and lebron showed the whole league how to do that basically by signing short-term deals over and over and over and now he knows this is where he wants to be this is the franchise he long wanted to play for right and this is a, a, a partnership that is that has proved to be everything that he wanted it to be but they won right and they're working with them in a beautiful fashion so more than anything it's a collective feeling here and and it's refreshing right i mean you you everywhere you go now players are trying to dictate to management well i want this i want this I can show you this. I can bring in this player. But here's LeBron saying, hey, we're, we're working together beautifully. Let's keep it going. And I want to end my career here unless my son <laughs> right. brings me somewhere else. Yeah, where's Barney going to get drafted potentially you know, a few years down the road? And that, there's a lot to talk about between now and then. But just the fact that LeBron indeed is saying, hey, you know, I've enjoyed my years in L.A. It helps when you win a championship in his second season with the Lakers. But again, there's not going to be that carnival, uh, the kind of the circus atmosphere when, when he uh, was getting ready to leave Miami. Uh, several years ago, or, or Cleveland for the second time. Those entire seasons, he was asked, what are you going to do? What's going to happen? Where are you going to be six months from now? And, and now he gets to avoid all that. And what a strong statement to, to potential free agents uh, down the road. LeBron's here to stay. Uh, he never looked better than he did in the most recent playoff season. And uh, now we just wait for Anthony Davis. How long will his deal be? That, that's what's next. And, and then after that, games which we're starting right. to find out when those are happening. Slowly but surely. The NBA, yes, made it official that the Lakers will be playing in the first night of the regular season. They will, of course, be playing the Clippers. Game one is Tuesday, December 22nd at 7 o'clock. The other game that day is Warriors and Nets. KD expected to make his Brooklyn debut against his former team. The Christmas Day slate of games have also been announced, and it's a great lineup. The Lakers play at 5 o'clock against Luka Doncic and the Mavs. The day starts with the Young Pelicans against the Miami Heat, followed by the Warriors versus Bucks. Then Nets Celtics, the Lakers and Mavs are the fourth game of the day, which wraps up with then Clippers and Nuggets. Talking with me and Richard Jefferson on the Road Trip and Podcast, LeBron had nothing but praise for Luka's game. Luka is one of my favorite players in the NBA today. Mm -hmm. From the simple fact of the way I play the game is exactly how I love the way he plays the game. Team first, gets his guys involved. If you challenge me to score, I'm going to score. And at the same time, I'm going to score. And also, at the same time, I'm going to keep my guys involved. But I only I play for the team, and I'm going to play with a sense of joy. Um, when Luca was going through his contract um, negotiations with Nike, mm. um, and you saw him at one point, he was wearing Jordans. He, he started wearing a little, the other brands. I won't, other I won't, brands? You don't even say yeah, it. Yeah, I don't say the other so brands. Good at that. He was wearing the other brands on his feet during practices in that in notion. I wanted to begin Team LeBron and have Luca as my first signee uh -huh. with Nike. Oh, wow. This is what I wanted. Um, and I, I don't believe that the, my guys at Nike was ready for that. Uh, and obviously they were not because he ended up going to Jordan. Yeah. And I don't even know if Luca knows this, but he will know it now. 
I wanted Luca to be the first signee of Team LeBron mm -hmm. when he was going through his situation. And, um, and it didn't happen. He's still under the same umbrella of Nikes with Jordan, but I wanted him to be, uh, and that's how much I believed in him. Yeah. And, 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 it, and it's going to, I feel they're, like it's going to haunt me a little yeah, bit. It's going to haunt you. But, but they're, they're, I, I wanted him to be my guy. I wanted him to be my first guy because I, I just love what he stands for. I love everything about him, both on the court and off the court. He's just you, a, I have a great guy. We're going to get to that uh, sound in just a minute. But first, Lakers, Clippers, opening night. We knew that was coming, right? We, we didn't think yeah, anything else. I mean, the fans sense. didn't get their Western Conference Finals matchup, so <laughs> here it is. And they've already talked about it. They're going to use that as motivation. Uh, and, and they're excited about it, Brett. Yeah, for sure. You know, maybe it would have been Warriors-Lakers, if not for the Clay Thompson injury. Uh, that was definitely a possibility. But now it had to be this game. Once uh, the NBA revealed earlier uh, in the week that it was going to be Mavs-Lakers on Christmas, it had to be Clippers-Lakers on opening night. And, yeah, what, what a great way to pick up this season. Uh, Clippers, undeniably, just, just can't get over that hump. I mean, they won the first two regular season games against the Lakers last season. Never beat them after that. Uh, didn't get a chance to face them after blowing a, a comfortable lead in the second round of the playoffs. What will happen now? Uh, Montrez Harrell switching uniforms, going down the hall with the Lakers now. Uh, what will Serge Ibaka look like in a Clipper uniform? Uh, how much will, will LeBron and AD play? A lot of storylines potentially coming out of this, just, just this one game. And I think we'll talk about that a little bit later in the show, too. There's also a lot of talk about Getting the rings on opening night, Kevin yeah. Ding. Some Clippers. talk about maybe holding off the banner for later. Yeah, I like that. For the fans, but you got to look forward to that, too, against the Clippers, right? <laughs> <laughs> right, right. And I, I think Jeannie was pretty clear about saying the banner will wait till their fans there to, to share it with uh, at Staples Center because, uh, you know, she views it as uh, that type of feeling is, is necessary, right? It's, it's not just the players that that were on the court that wanted it was uh it was everybody together um and so that will wait but the rings absolutely the, the players earned those and and should deserve deservedly receive them um and in front of the clippers would be a, a little extra touch right um but I, frankly i think the clippers should be delighted to be still included in the party right after the, their <laughs> poor showing i mean they, they should be happy to be on stage, you know, even if they're second fiddle to the Lakers in, in opening night. Another year where well they just said. didn't get past the second round. It's, <laughs> it's amazing. It really is.